the southeast corner of Australia lies Victoria. Some say it's a complete geography lesson in one compact state. From the rolling grasslands across its continental centre, to the rich forests in the eastern highlands. In the west, there are tough, dry lands they call the Sunset Country. While on the picturesque southern coast, there's a classic Mediterranean climate. But in the extreme heat of summer, this fertile southeastern corner of Australia bends and twists and dehydrates. Australia's three southeastern states, including Victoria, join California and southern France to be transformed into one of the high fire risk areas of the world. fastest travelling fire in the world, 17 kilometres an hour. Um, we had no hope of getting near it. 1983 was a year Victorians will always remember as the year of the Ash Wednesday bushfires. It was a time of extraordinary loss and immeasurable suffering. But it was a time in which Victorians came of age in their attitude to bushfire prevention. Bushfire season now on us, it's a good opportunity to get up and have a look at our assets in the countryside and see what it is that we're protecting. relatively new as the chairman of the commission, I can assure you that the board of commissioners regards safety, particularly as far as bushfire mitigation is concerned, as a very high priority. The SEC's expenditure on mitigation is substantial and we are confident that its staff are just as committed to those programs as are the commissioners themselves. The State Electricity Commission of Victoria has an unshakable commitment to reduce the risk of bushfires resulting from the electricity service it provides. It has a bushfire mitigation campaign across Victoria costing nearly $90 million a year. It's a campaign based on four fundamental points. Secretary of the SEC, Mr John Horgan. We know what causes bushfires. We know what to do to stop our own assets causing fires. We've got the right mitigation program working to reduce the risk of fire and finally we've got a system to measure, monitor and manage the mitigation program so that we really know that it works. In Victoria there's one organization spending 25 million dollars a year cutting and felling trees. One organization who cut trees to save our forests. Because after Ash Wednesday we all know the trees and power lines don't mix. That organization, the SEC, working towards a fire-safe Victoria. Trees and power lines don't mix. In fact, trees near or touching power lines are by far the greatest single factor in bushfire risk facing the SEC. The tree problem across Victoria is handled on a three-year cutting cycle. Annual pre-summer tree and line inspections are made either from the ground or by efficient aerial patrols. SEC tree cutting crews have been trained to cut the trees heavily enough so that regrowth shouldn't become hazardous again before the next three-year cutting cycle. While in most urban areas, the responsibility for tree cutting has been taken over by local municipal councils under the strengthened SEC Act. 
The SEC is also taking a number of other initiatives to further decrease the tree and power line problem. Like these fiberglass spreaders, which have almost completely stopped low voltage conductors clashing. And the replacement of higher risk lines with newly developed insulated aerial bundled cable. The SEC is pleased with the performance of this product and now has its own full-scale training program teaching the correct use of aerial bundle cable. The prevention of pole failures is the SEC's next most important fire risk task. Because good quality timber poles are scarce, concrete poles are seeing more use in Victoria. But they are susceptible to problems of bird flashovers. So special long insulators or plastic cross-arm covers are being installed with new concrete poles. The SEC also has in place a comprehensive three-year inspection and testing cycle on its nearly one million wooden poles across rural Victoria. Indeed, there is no doubt that with the right inspection routine and treatment, wooden poles can reliably provide a life expectancy of up to 40 years. Where pole life extension is feasible, the anti-rot chemical Blue 7 is being used to obtain many years of additional pole life. Pole staking is another method used to quickly and effectively increase pole life while freeing up crews for other essential work. While at the Chisholm Institute of Technology near Melbourne, the SEC is supporting a pole testing research project using the medical system of CAT scanning. The next step, a portable field CAT scanner, a world first, and quite possibly a new direction for SEC pole inspections. Some people believe that the safety of privately owned power lines is totally up to the SEC, and they're wrong. Private power lines on private land are the responsibility of those who live there. And some people believe that private power lines couldn't cause another Ash Wednesday. And they're wrong. Horribly wrong. The SEC, working towards a fire-safe Victoria. Privately owned lines in rural districts have caused fires in the past. Now, under its amended act, the SEC has unprecedented power over the maintenance and construction of private power lines. Since 1983, most private lines have been inspected twice by the SEC under a three-year cycle. If substantial repairs are needed, these lines are to be installed underground. Where private lines have been classed as potentially dangerous, they are to be disconnected on days of total fire ban. The SEC may also disconnect selected lines of its own in times of extreme fire danger. However, the loss of power and communications to firefighters and the need to inspect lines before reconnecting make this an option only for extreme circumstances. Another major fire concern for the SEC has been fuses. In the past, fuses have caused fires by allowing hot particles to drop to the ground. In 1987, a new range of boric acid fuses was introduced. They're more effective and greatly reduce the risk of fire. While research at the Sydney University is being directed towards the development of an improved sparkless link for expulsion dropout fuses. But until then, the SEC has introduced a new fire choke for expulsion fuses. It's more effective in catching the hot particles. And through its smaller size, it also reduces the chance of bird flashovers. The list of modifications, improvements and additions to the SEC bushfire mitigation operation is long and complex. So now they're all detailed in the new bushfire mitigation manual, the Bible for the whole plan. But the best of management plans and intent will be fruitless if not followed through in the field. Yes, Andrew, I've got the report here. All poles have, made, uh, have been made fire safe. To check this, regular monthly mitigation reports are sent to head office from all SEC district offices. And each January, 
a group of senior SEC managers, including Chief General Manager Jim Smith, head out to personally check a sample of districts. We're all bent to go as a well-run district. Uh, I think that uh, they'll have done a good job in terms of preparing for the bushfire season. And certainly though, uh, we take these audits uh, by top management very seriously. They're very thorough. So we'll uh, see what comes. And what we've done is we've split the area into three and we can demonstrate to you today that we're through two of those inspection areas and we're also about halfway through the third inspection areas. This yeah, is called a bushfire mitigation audit considerably. and the district now, manager's performance here is those. critical. This has taken off the, the this, actual supervisor's report. This is a well, well, blown up copy of a report from our line inspector. Mm. This one relates particularly to trees. Was this a, a, a limited life or an unserviceable? Unserviceable. This was unserviceable. an unserviceable. Yeah. We have to prepare ourselves for this bushfire season and to always be on the alert for the little things because uh, a small thing can have such a devastating effect in Victoria. In 1983, Ash Wednesday gave all Victorians an experience they could scarcely comprehend. The SEC bushfire mitigation plan was kindled by the severity of that experience. Today, through its complexity and extraordinary detail, this plan is unique in Australia. But here, bushfires are about people, and although for some the scars of Ash Wednesday may be starting to fade, Country people never forget. Bendigo District SEC Manager Andrew Lelliot. Well, I've worked in and managed country districts for about the last 18 or 20 years. And uh, working in a country district also means that you are part of the town that you live in. And I think that's very important because you not only work for the SEC, but you work for the local community. And because of that, I guess fires become much more personal to us. They affect the SEC, but they affect you as a member of, of that community. Um, we're always looking for new tools to make sure that uh, we know what's happening out in the rural area. We've introduced our line information system, which is a recording system, which correlates all this information and allows me to check on a monthly basis just how things are out in the bush. If there's a hole, we fix it. People might say that uh, five years after Ash Wednesday, that the SEC would be starting to forget about bushfires. But I can tell you that uh, everyone in my district, come October, November, start to think very, very seriously about bushfires. There's no doubt that the local responsibility for ensuring that we are not involved in starting bushfires in Bendigo lies with me. And every other district manager probably feels the same way I do. You see, if we have a bushfire here, it's a major disaster perhaps for the SEC if we're involved, but an even bigger disaster is for my friends and family that live in Bendigo. Bushfire and the destruction it spawns is very much a personal issue in Victoria. So in the case of bushfire mitigation, the impetus for success seems equally to come from the field as the boardroom. And for that reason, above any other, the SEC bushfire mitigation plan is working and is proving an unrivaled success. And that's just as well, because Victorians believe there is so much to lose. <laughs>